When you signed up to be a Civil War soldier, typically in your town or in a, in a city near your town, you're going to go ahead and join a company. That company of maybe in concept 100 men, but more close to 30 to 50 men in a lot of cases, will eventually be commissioned into a regiment of 10 companies typically. Those 10 companies make up a regiment, and we're standing in a regimental monument here. The numbers of men in a regiment changed a lot throughout the war, but you know, in the middle of the war you could assume a regiment has about 300 men from the same town or county or state or part of a state. A regiment is typically commanded by a lieutenant colonel or a colonel. And those regiments are usually put together into things called brigades. The brigade is, in my opinion, the standard fighting unit of the Civil War. Battles, in my opinion, are fought by brigades. If you want to understand a battle, understand what the brigades did, and it'll all fall into place. Um, brigades are typically commanded by, appropriately, a brigadier general. Brigadier, brigade. Uh, a brigadier general will command a brigade. Sometimes, if that's not available, a colonel will. Sometimes even a lieutenant colonel, especially as it got later into the war. A brigade will consist of two, three, four, five, six, even seven regiments sometimes. But if you typically have four or five regiments in a brigade, and those regiments each have three or four hundred guys, you're looking at about 1,500 to 2,000 men in a Civil War brigade. Brigades are grouped into divisions. Typically, Confederates put more brigades into their divisions. Yankees tended to put fewer. So you're often going to have two or three brigades into a Union division, but you'll typically have three, four, or five um, brigades in a Confederate division. Therefore, Confederate divisions are a lot bigger. Um, divisions are ideally commanded by major generals, those major generals overseeing the brigadier generals and brigades below them. Um, but both sides varied greatly on this. On the Union side, you're going to regularly have brigadier generals and in a few cases even colonels commanding divisions. On the Confederate side, that's much more rare. Uh, in the East and the West, you're usually going to have major generals commanding divisions. And not only major generals, major generals that went to a military school, the Virginia Military Institute, uh, West Point when they were back in the North, um, or of course the Citadel. Um, so you're going to have a different treatment when it comes to these divisions. Either way, a couple of divisions, two, three, or even four divisions makes up a corps. Both armies did it that way. A corps is ideally commanded in the South by a lieutenant general, and it usually was indeed, sometimes by major generals. And um, uh, on the Union side, a corps is usually commanded by a major general, though sometimes brigadier generals did it as well. Um, these corps will then be grouped one, two, or three, or sometimes even four, or five, or six, or seven, into an army. So in summary, both armies, both the infantry and the cavalry, are organized into companies, into regiments, into brigades, into divisions, into corps, and into armies. Memorize that and you'll understand the Civil War just a little bit better. The artillery is organized differently from the infantry and the cavalry. The artillery is, of course, cannon-based, and one cannon is called a piece. And if you put two cannons together, you get a section, okay? That section is typically commanded by a lieutenant, um, and if you put a couple of sections together, two or three, you actually have a battery. A battery in the south is four cannons on average, and in the north, it's about six cannons on average, although both sides changed in that respect. And that battery on both sides is ideally commanded by a captain, but often commanded by a lieutenant as well. A battery might have had about 120 to 150 soldiers in it. These batteries could be attached uh, throughout the army, throughout the war, in different ways. Um, but either way, as the war went on, both sides came up with a system where they could group batteries together. The South eventually would group batteries by battalions, and the Yankees would group batteries by brigades. Not a whole lot of difference between them. The Confederate battalions tended to be bigger than the Union brigades. What's more important is how they were attached, and ultimately both sides realized that early in the war, when they had individual batteries and battalions attached to specific infantry units, it wasn't working, because you could be in a tight spot and not have all the artillery you needed. So both sides developed a huge artillery reserve where they would have a certain number of battalions and brigades of artillery that the army commander, that the chief of artillery could command and get into the right part of the battle at the right time.